So hi everybody and welcome to AQ's Blog and Grill. Today we have Guy Kawasaki with us. And the Guy is a terrific guy. I mean, he's there he is. And he's named after Guy Lombardo, who is a Canadian and, uh, Canadian. and and Guy's parents were big Guy Lombardo fans. So that's, you know, that's kind of a connection we have here with uh, young Kawasaki. Um, now, Guy, you're the new evangelist um, for Canva. Now, yes. can you tell us a little bit about Canva and, and why did you choose them? Sure. Canva basically is a tool. It's an online tool and it enables people to use this amazingly simple graphics design <laughs> tool. Okay. Uh, it's, it's for people who need to create graphics for things like announcements, social media posts, email, business cards, presentations, posters. It, it, I think it democratizes design because it lowers the entry point and not only in terms of price, but also in terms of difficulty. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just like Macintosh made computers more democratic, uh, this, uh, Canva makes design more democratic. Okay. And, and you use some other examples too. Uh, Macintosh kind of democratized, you know, the personal computing world. Right. And there are some other examples you've used. eBay, for yes. example. eBay democratized commerce. Okay. You know, any, anybody could have a store. Etsy democratize crafts. Anybody could have a craft store. Uh, Google democratized information. Now you didn't need to, you know, work for a large government agency or right. a, a university or a large company. You had, you could do research. You could access basically all the knowledge of humankind. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? I mean, both. I know both of us are fans of uh, Peter Drucker and. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Drucker predicted that we'd all be knowledge workers in the future, but kind of Google assumed that for us because we can get <laughs> knowledge quickly. And, yep. you know, now it's all about, I'm going to show Guy's book here. But I want to ask you about this dedication because I think it's fascinating. To my mother and father, because they taught me how to think, act, and defy. Yep. What's, what's up with the defy part? What, where does that come from? My mother and father more or less taught me to not take any crap from anybody. Um, and you still work yeah. for Steve Jobs. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, Steve Jobs is one of the few people in the world who was worth taking crap from. Okay, fair enough. Now, your dad was uh, a state uh, senator. Yes. And um, you're now at a stage where you could maybe dedicate a little bit of time to a political pursuit. Any, yes. uh, any thoughts about that? No desire whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, having been raised in a politician's family, I, I know what it takes of the person and also of the family. And I am just not willing to sacrifice my family that way. There you uh, go. You know, that might be selfish and all that, but, you know, what can I say? What you see is what you get. <laughs> uh, no, I, I have no interest in politics at all. Well, maybe it's time, Guy, to democratize politics. There's a lot of people in America who would like it to go the opposite way. Let's go back to the evangelism part. And you've described it. Well, first of all, do you know who invented the term? Was it you? Evangelism? Yeah. <laughs> Arguably, uh, Jesus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, it, it comes from the Greek word of bringing the good news. And with Macintosh, I brought the good news of a computer. And right. with Canva, I'm bringing the good news of a design tool. Okay. Cool. Now, there's been some discussion online about Canva and, you know, democratizing design, but mm -hmm. it's not, uh, it doesn't necessarily make you a graphic designer. Oh, no. Neither does Word make you an author, or back then, does PageMaker make you a printer? Uh, Google doesn't make you a, a genius, you know? Right. I mean, these are tools in the hands of the right people. Yes, they could mm -hmm. do a lot. Yep. Um, our thing is that we would like it so that more people can try design. Right. So rather than having to buy a thousand dollar application or rent this application and to to go through this, you know, very steep and difficult learning curve, um, but it doesn't replace design expertise or taste. Uh, you know, some of these high end tools, you would use them to create, for example, a logo. You wouldn't create a logo in Canva. Okay. But once you have the logo, you would deploy it using Canva. Okay. So there's a difference between creation and deployment, and, and Canva is extremely good at deployment. So we don't think we replace those tools, mm -hmm. but 
you know, if you had to whip up a, a quick graphic to go with a blog post or with a direct email, something like that, you know, do you need that thousand dollar tool? Do you need to you know, spend an hour futzing with it? I don't think so. I mean, you can you can create a very good graphic in under five minutes with Canva. No okay. question about it. Excellent. I have signed up and and I'm yeah. going to try it this week. So I'll let you know how it goes. Okay. Um, now. Who started Canva? What was what was the deal there? Canva was started by two people in Australia. Uh, they were students and then they were instructors at this University of Western Australia. Mm -hmm. And Melanie uh, Perkins in particular was teaching people how to use high-end tools and notice how difficult it was for them to grasp and use these tools. So the first business they started was a, a business where they enable people to print yearbooks. Ah. And then they noticed that what they did with that technology was applicable to more than just yearbook design, to design in general. Right. So that was the genesis of Canva. Excellent. And today, today we have, oh, uh, like 300 and I think 50 or 60,000 registered users. They're creating about 15 or 20,000 designs per day. Excellent. More than a million designs since August. So it really has captured people's imagination. Yeah. There, there was an unmet need and boom. Yes. Yeah, which is all yes. entrepreneurship's about, right? Oh, uh, that's and I mean, if you, well, if you look at if you look at some of the great tech companies, they democratize stuff, right? There, there was great interest for personal computers. Right. Everybody didn't want to drive back to the office and use a mainframe or a mini, and you know there was a great interest for eBay. You know. I, I bet back then, some people probably would have said, well, you know, the fact that you can open a store doesn't mean you can make good stuff and sell good stuff. Right. On the other hand, the fact that you can open a store doesn't mean you're making good stuff and selling good stuff either. Right. So I think when the playing field is more even and the barriers to entry are lower, you know, let's all just have at it and may the people with the greatest merit survive. Well, there you that's go. A, that's a democracy. <laughs> Evangelism, you have said, is not just a job title. It's a way of life. Yes. So yes. who else do you see out there that, that makes a remarkable organizational evangelist? I would say Elon Musk is one example. Okay. Arguably, Elon Musk is the new Steve Jobs. Yeah. You know, he has, he has stuff that people say, you know, you, you must be crazy. You know, people won't buy an electric car. Uh People, you know, are afraid of the battery, you know, I don't know, whatever people said. Right. Uh, people are not going to get in a little tube to uh, jet from <laughs> San Francisco to Los Angeles. I mean, he may be stretching it there. It's not clear I would get in that tube. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. So, but you never know. Uh, also, I would say Richard Branson is oh, an evangelist. Bingo, yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, you can make the case that Oprah Winfrey is an evangelist. So there are some evangelists out there. Yeah. Now you've encountered Branson a few times uh, yes. over the years. What, what's that guy really like? Well, the best story I have about Richard Branson is we were both speaking at the same uh, conference in Moscow, and he asked me if I was flying on Virgin, and I said, no, I've never flown on Virgin. And he got down on his knees and started polishing my shoes with his jacket. <laughs> so I have a picture of that. That's literally the moment that I started flying Virgin. And what do you find is different about the Virgin experience? Virgin experience, well, my primary experience is Virgin America. Right. Right. So out of San Francisco, it's in a brand new terminal. You know, the plane is inside. I think it's cooler looking. Yeah. Uh, the way you can order via the system at your seat, you know, that it places the order to the flight attendants. Uh, I like the power in every seat. You know, there's a lot of, yeah, I, I am also a United Airlines global service level customer. Right. I must admit, if I'm going to a city and I have a choice between United and Virgin, you know, I often pick Virgin America. At, yeah. at some level, it's also the schedule, but well, sure. all things being equal, I would pick Virgin America, particularly because Virgin America, every plane has Wi-Fi. Well, that's true too. It has for a long time. It's not just innovation doesn't just apply to technology. It applies to the customer experience. Like, Sure, how can we absolutely. keep? How can we keep innovating so the guy and Alan have a better flight? <laughs> Whoa! How about that? Yeah, what a what a concept, huh? <laughs> now, um, I, you know, I do my entrepreneur thing here at, at the university in Waterloo, and 
Uh, my favorite book is The Art of the Start. Thank and, you. And I know it goes back a while. Yeah. But are, are you planning to um, renovate, revise, yes. reissue? Yes. Believe it or not, The Art of the Start is 10 years old. And that book was written prior to crowdsourcing, mm -hmm. prior to social media, yeah. and prior to cloud computing. So those are three big issues. The book is being revised right now, but I have another book in the hopper too called The Art of Social Media. So ah. I'm, working on, I'm working on two books right now. Okay. And then I have this, you know, I have this day job called Canva. So <laughs> I, and I you've have got a few hockey. Things. Right. And hockey, yeah, I just got finished playing hockey and I have four children. But besides that, I don't have much to do. <laughs> we still have some, uh, some, some of Guy's uh, enchantment. Another good book. I yes. like this because it really is about, you've got to gain insight into your customer, uh, your prospects, how are you going to make them feel mm -hmm. like they want to get engaged with you. How's the response been to this book? Uh, also very good. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that book is about three or four years old now. And what I tried to do was capture and modernize the spirit of How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Right. So, you know, I think he sold about it was like, I think, 40 million or something. Right. I would love to sell 40 million copies of Enchantment. I, right. I don't think it's going to happen, but uh, yeah. So what, what I tried to do is yeah, a lot of social psychology studies have happened since 1930, right? Yeah. So, uh, so I was inspired by Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People, as yeah. well as a book called Influence by Bob Cialdini. Okay. Also, rec highly recommended reading. Okay, Influence. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, you just published an article, I think it was sponsored by Canva, on the 10 uh, disruptive quotes. And yes. uh, you used yeah. a couple of yours, and you had a couple of Branson's. Yeah. Walt Disney. Yeah. That was Steve good to Jobs. see Walt back in the equation. Yeah. Uh, because, wow, talk about a disruptor. Yeah, no kidding. No yeah. kidding. And, and then you had the quote, you had two quotes from Hubert Humphrey. Which wow, that that surprised me. I was a big <laughs> Humphrey fan back in the uh, back in the '60s. And then you had the quote from uh, Carnegie, and I thought that was great. That was your tenth quote because yeah. he was the father, if you will, of of that whole positive thinking thing. Absolutely, he was. Yes, yeah. and, and we've got to remember that. Um, I mean, the world is happening very fast. You've got four kids. You've got hockey. You've got books. You've got speaking. You're evangelizing all over the place. But you still have to be happy, and you still have to be, you know, thinking about making the world a better place. And I think that's what Carnegie does. Yeah. So. I tell you, you know, the one thing that can just alter my mood all day long is whether I score in hockey at pickup. <laughs> and today I scored, so today's a good day. There you go. Well, nothing that's... else matters. Yeah, life is good. Okay, you see, well, I, I am just a, I am just a Canadian stuck in a Hawaiian body. <laughs> well, that's yeah. great, Guy. Thank you for for being with us today and talking about You're Canva welcome. and a bunch of other stuff. We're going to be giving away some more Guy Kawasaki books if you subscribe to AQ's Blog and Grill. And I'm going to send this button to Guy because I think he's a real shift disturber. Uh, <laughs> so I'm uh, I'm sending you this button and thank you okay. very much. Thank you, All Guy. Right. We'll talk to you thank later. You. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.